Passion, aggression, willingness to run, endless willingness to run, the desire to keep going no matter what was going on in the game, chances created, probably the most chances we've created all season, and two goals that have resulted in three points. But this was by no means a perfect performance. It was arguably our best performance of the season so far, certainly in a Premier League game in terms of the overall actual performance from all the players individually and collectively. But like I say, I still think if we were playing against a much more put together side, a much more efficient and relentless side ourselves, I think we still probably would have lost tonight. And I don't want to get carried away after a result like that when I look at the fixtures against Bournemouth, Bayern Munich and Liverpool in the next two weeks. And yes, I do include Bournemouth in that list because Bournemouth are a very well put together team at the moment. A great 2-0 win for them tonight against Crystal Palace. So I can't sit here and say that if we play that at the weekend, we're going to win because we genuinely might not. But we have to look at the positives first because there are so many positives to take away from this game. Firstly, I thought the lineup was a very, very good one. The only change I would have made to that starting lineup is off the back of their performance against Newcastle. I would have played Maguire and Shaw and I would have brought in Regulon from the start. And I'm pleased that after what wasn't a great first half for Victor Lindelof, I think he was probably the most capable for Chelsea's goal. I'm pleased that Eric Ten Hag addressed that at half time. And pretty much for the entirety of the second half, other than the potential back heel and the bro your header that hit the post, but Onana had it covered. Chelsea didn't really offer a lot in the second half. And I think that is down to the lineup that we put out tonight, which worked really well. And I feel a little bit sorry for Kobe Mainu because I've been really impressed with him since he came into the side. But I spoke about the protection and Mainu needs protection. And when it's Mainu and McTominay, McTominay has to sit a little bit deeper because he has to cover for Mainu more. When Amrabat plays in that holding midfield role and obviously when Casemiro comes back, if Casemiro comes back, it then frees up McTominay. So it's a really tough balancing act where you want to play Mainu, but you want to unleash McTominay as well. Because as you saw tonight, when McTominay gets unleashed, he genuinely is, in my opinion, an outstanding box-to-box -box midfielder. I've been crying out for it for years that I do believe he is. I'm not going to, again, I'm not putting him in the same bracket as Yaya Toure. But his style of play does remind me of Yaya Toure. And I say I'm not putting him as good, you know, as actual overall ability, but like I say, style of play, desire to get in the box, getting in, into goal-scoring positions and scoring goals. And he was allowed to do that tonight because Amrabat was covering. And it worked really well. I was so impressed with the entire attacking line. The only disappointment I have from an attacking perspective is once again Rasmus Hoyland, who for the life of him is putting himself about to no end. And the, the service just isn't quite there. If you want to break down sort of our team from an offensive side of play, I would say from defence to attack, it was 9 out of 10. Then from attack to putting the ball in the net, probably about 6 out of 10. Because Anthony wasted chances. McTominay probably could have scored 4 or 5. Garnacho probably could have had a couple. Bruno probably could have had a couple. But all of them collectively never found Rasmus Hoyland once. And that is still a bit of a concern. It's been the biggest problem for Manchester United, probably for the last five or six years, is that the strikers don't get the right amount of service. And like I said, I don't want to take away from a really good performance offensively. But again, the balls from Anthony, the balls from Garnacho, and even from Fernandez, Shaw, Reggion, Dallo, whichever ones you want, they just weren't meeting Hoyland's expectations. And he was making brilliant runs off Thiago Silva and Disarsi tonight. And when the ball came in, they were either over hit or they shot when they could have crossed. And just unfortunately, once again for Hoyland, it didn't quite happen. But like I say, take that out. I still think offensively were brilliant. I thought Garnacho was fantastic. He literally played Cucurella off the pitch in the first half. And to be quite honest with you, he made quite a mockery of Reese James in the second half as well. And then Anthony was absolutely outstanding. Everything that I expected from Anthony after what I saw in the Galatasaray game, I do not know why he didn't start against Newcastle. And tonight he proved again why he can be a very, very talented player, why we did pay so much money for him. I just hope that he can just go that one step further. Like we said, get those crosses into Hoyland right shoot at the right times and for god's sake man use your right foot more often and you know it was him that created the penalty 
Slight heavy touch, don't get me wrong. He had the opportunity to go on his right foot and shoot. He chose to come inside. Endo Fernandez does scrape across his foot. It's soft, but again, under the rules, it's a penalty. Bruno misses, one, as I said, one of many chances missed for Manchester United tonight. He misses, Garnacho blazes the rebound over. It is what it is. But what is so good to see is that after something that's gone against us, we've responded by going, okay, we've had a bad moment right there, but at least we're creating chances. Let's go again. More chances created, and eventually Scott McTominay scores, and we go 1-0 up. We keep pushing. Again, missed chances from Anthony, Garnacho, from McTominay, and Chelsea get one real sort of good breakaway. Sterling to Jackson, that should have been a goal for Chelsea, and we'll touch on the overall thing at the moment when we get there. And then, of course, Cole Palmer's goal, which I've already spoken about. I think, really, for me, it's poor from Lindelof. I think there's a point where you do need to go to ground in the penalty area. I know there is such a scrutiny over penalties at the moment, and he's probably thinking about the penalty that we got. But when Cole Palmer gets into that position, especially when you know Maguire is now closing the angle on the other side, I think Lindelof has to go to ground and make that block. And I think in the second half, you would have seen when Chelsea had the ball in around the area, Luke Shaw was going to ground to make those blocks and prevent Chelsea from having chances. And I think Ten Hag realised that, and that's why Lindelof had to come off. My only other concern is how those chances were being created in the first place. And that again comes down to what I was saying about the balancing act regarding offence versus defence. And we're still letting too many runs from midfield go. And that's what I mean about the balancing act. When McTominay's making those bomb starming run, uh, runs into the box, if we don't score, we're in massive trouble. We're in massive trouble. Because as good as Amrabat was tonight, I thought Amrabat was absolutely brilliant tonight. He can't single-handedly stop three midfielders running forward. And again, you've got to look at the Bayern Munich game where we're going to have the likes of Kimmich, Goretzka, Nabry, Tell, Muziala, whoever you want running through that midfield. If Amrabat's there on his own, he's screwed. And potentially even worse when Liverpool, when we go to Anfield, Trent coming into midfield, going through those channels, Saboshloy, McAllister, Curtis Jones, whoever, Nunez dropping off the front to come into the attack. We could be in serious trouble if Amrabat is left isolated. So it is a little bit of a worry because, yes, we've won this game 2-1. When I sat here yesterday morning and spoke about my predictions, I said this could literally be 0-0 or 5-5. I think... We look at it at full time. I think it probably should have been about 7-3 to Manchester United due to the amount of missed chances from both teams. But that is because Chelsea had that many missed chances as well. And this is the whole point. If we give up that much possession in that areas of the pitch against Bayern Munich and Liverpool, we lose. So there is still a lot of work to be done there. That's why I'm not going to go crazy about this performance because there is still a lot of weakness defensively when the ball gets turned over. The easiest way to solve that is to be more ruthless at the other end ourselves. Because, like I said, we've had the most chances created so far this season for Manchester United in a match. But we've only come away with two goals. We've missed a penalty. We've missed open goals. McTominay had a 3v1 where he should have just squared it and he scuffed the shot wide. Anthony had chances. Garnacho had chances. Everyone had chances. Some of the balls from Dallow were just a little bit over hit. All of these are good things to build on. But like I say, with big opponents coming up in the next two weeks, we miss that many chances going forward. Firstly, we're not going to get that many chances going forward. And secondly, the team that will be turning it over when we miss those chances are going to be much more well-organised, much more efficient in their attacking play and much more ruthless when they get in and around the penalty area. Because... As much as I talk about our misses, Mudrich should have scored, Jackson should have scored, Sterling should have scored, Enzo Fernandez should have scored, and possibly Broya could have scored and maybe should have scored as well. So we can't give up that many chances, even when we're playing that well, because the better teams will beat us. But like I say, I am very happy with tonight's performance. I'm so happy for Scott McTominay because I keep going on about him. He would be the captain of Manchester United if I was the manager. He is the embodiment of Manchester United. We keep talking about the homegrown players and Rashford and his attitude. No one... Oh, I can't think of the right word. No one um, shows themselves as a Manchester United player more than Scott McTominay, in my opinion. And that is why he would be my captain. He is the homegrown player that tonight 
lifted the players, as Jamie Carragher was talking about with Marcus Rashford the other day. And I'm so pleased for him that he makes it five Premier League goals in his last eight games to go with his six Euro qualifying goals for Scotland so far this season. And who knows? We Maybe we beat Bournemouth at the weekend, beat Bayern Munich and somehow get through into the Champions League and then go and win at Anfield. I don't think so. I think we should beat Bournemouth. I'm not convinced about Bayern and Liverpool just yet, but good building blocks to work on going into the next few weeks. Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments. I think it was a very, very topsy-turvy night, full of chances, great entertainment for the neutrals. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very soon.